fighting to sort of get the stock. Since most of you probably are not familiar with the topic, I will give a long, long, probably too long introduction, and then maybe finally I will give some new current results uh, obtained with in collaboration with Corina Uchigai and Minsung Kim. So let's me uh, quickly pass to the main object. So let's start with the smallest dimensional uh, possible situation. So we will deal with compact, connected, orientable surfaces, which are equipped with ARIA form. ARIA form means that in some uh, local coordinates is of the form uh, the X watch uh, the Y. And by local Hamiltonian flow, we mean just uh, flows which preserve uh, area form. So it's a question why I call it uh, uh, locally Hamiltonian flows. It will be uh, explained in a minute. I should mention that such kind of flows are also called multivalued Hamiltonian flows. And the interest or in the study was started by Novikov in 80s in connection with some problems arising in state, uh, solid state physics and pseudo-periodic uh, geometry. And to see the Hamiltonian nature of this flow, let's look at uh, the corresponding uh, vector field. And uh, then we should define the associated uh, differential form uh, eta, which is given by the following way, by, by contraction. And a standard argument says that as the flow preserves the area form, then this guy is a closed form. If it is a closed, it means that it's locally exact. If it is locally exact, that is the exterior uh, differential of some local function. And this function H is just a local Hamiltonian. Okay, because of this formula, when we take omega, which is a, which has a pure form, d, 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 d x, uh, which dy, then you quickly see that our 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 um, our corresponding vector field has really Hamiltonian form, but it's only local. So of course, this local Hamiltonian. Uh, can be uh, so first of all it's unique up to uh, additive constant so it means that we can extend step by step or patch by patch to the whole surface but it's not true it cannot be extended to the whole surface because surface is not simply connected but nevertheless we can extend to the um, to the to the universal car and this function H on the universal cover is uh, usually called multivalued Hamiltonian, but for us it's not important. Okay, let's say something about fixed flows, the uh, fixed points, sorry. Uh, first of all, we will deal with flows with isolated fixed points. Then of course, because of compactness, uh, flows, has only, flows have only finitely many uh, fixed points. Uh, if the genius is greater than one, of course, this set of fixed points is non-empty. And because of the fact that uh, the, the, the flow is area preserving, there are not so many possibilities for, for, for fixed points. Uh, they can be either centers, simple saddles, or multiple saddles of this form. So uh, you don't see here the, 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 the direction of the trajectories, but probably you are able to, to, uh, to see them. Okay, so we will distinguish a special situation when uh, a fixed point is non-degenerated. And this is the situation when the Hessian of the Hamiltonian is non-zero. Then standard Morse lemma says you, that in some uh, local coordinates, our, our, our uh, Hamiltonian can have uh, elliptic or hyperbolic form. This elliptic gives you a center, hyperbolics give you a simple saddle. Uh, but uh, 
we, okay, so this situation is a special situation because it's topologically typical, which means that there is an open and dense set of flows for which all saddles, uh, sorry, all fixed points are of this form. But we also permit some degenerate fixed points. I will call them perfect, uh, perfect uh, degenerate saddles uh, uh, of multiplicity M. In this situation, we can find local coordinates for which uh, the Hamiltonian has the following form. This is exactly the same situation as here. And uh, in this situation, we have M incoming and M outgoing separatrices. And this is exactly the situation which we observe here. Here, M is equal to three. <clears throat> okay, so first let's look at topological properties of this flow. To understand uh, topological properties, we should say something about saddle connections. A saddle connection is a orbit, an orbit or, or, or separatrix joining uh, two saddles. If, if uh, a saddle connection join the same saddle, then we, say, we, we call the saddle a saddle loop. For example, it's funny. So if we have a center, that it might be, it should be rounded by, uh, by, by, by a such saddle loop. Okay, what, uh, why the saddle connection are so important? For example, if there are no saddle connections, this is an open property. It's not dense, but it's open. Then the flow is, mini is minimal, which means that every, every uh, orbit uh, is dense, except of fixed points, of course. Uh, but we have also a general description of, 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 of topological description. We have a pure, um, a pure uh, splitting of our surface into finitely many invariant subsurfaces with boundary. And uh, we distinguish between so-called minimal components and periodic components, periodic components are filled by periodic orbits, fixed points, and saddle connections. For example, here in this picture, we have two minimal components and three periodic components. Okay, what about, what about ergodic properties of such flows? To understand this question, we have to introduce the notion of typicality, but uh, in a measure theoretical framework. How to do it? First of all, we have to stratify our space of uh, flows. This stratification is the following. For every vector M and number C, so the numbers here are at least one, the, the number C is not too big, and then we denote by a stratum FMC, the set of all the flows, which has uh, C centers and S saddles, and the number F M1 to MC are the multiplicities of, of saddles. And now we can define, define uh, the measure theoretical typicality in the following way. Uh, we use, first of all, the one form, eta, which was introduced two slides ago. And then we also use a base of first homologies, first relative homologies relative with respect to the fixed points. So we take some base curves starting from fixed points and ending at fixed points, and we consider so-called period map. It's very easy guy uh, which assign to any flow a vector and in this way we integrate just eta according to, to, to the base element. Uh, this map it's not uh, globally defined but it's not important it's locally defined and using this map we can transport we can take pullback 
the, the, the measure, the Lebeck measure class. We don't care about measure. We care only about a class of zero measure sets, and then we can put back this class. And when we use now, when we use the expression almost every locally Hamiltonian flow, in what follows, we mean full uh, that a set has full uh, measure with respect to. So sorry, in uh, any, uh, in any strata. Yeah. So Mason, we set this up in the case of the Teichmuller dynamics, uh, you know, with a yes, a yes. Okay, okay, okay. So you ask about the next. So I'm a bit and... surprised. I'm a bit surprised. Did they work in this generality of a Hamiltonian the way? You... No, 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 no. They didn't work. So, they didn't. Yeah, work. Some this, this is the corollary. This oh. is a simple corollary uh, to 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 uh, express you. Uh, why you're applying your general yeah, yeah, yeah. to the Tachmuller setting. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't remember. I they, don't, they didn't uh, prove this. Uh, yeah, they, they, introduced, they introduced several connections. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. but nevertheless, as, as, as Peter said, uh, so Mazur and Beach proved something for interval exchange transformations yeah, right. and for translation flows, but nevertheless, nevertheless using Using right. this language, we can formulate. Uh, so this result, okay, okay. Now you, you will not find an anywhere. So so this is just for yeah, yeah, you for can fun. Be modest, you can say. Okay, but nevertheless, <laughs> you can you can you can prove uh, the fact that if we consider only flows without centers, then almost every almost every uh, locally Hamiltonian flow is ergodic. In fact, we have something like unique ergodicity, but unique ergodicity, of course, means that the only ergodic uh, measure is either the area form or fixed point uh, Dirac measures. And the same result we can formulate also in the complement, but then we have to restrict our attention to minimal components, to any minimal component of, of the form. Okay. But this, okay, so we said something about topological properties, uh, ergodic properties, but if you would like to uh, study some deeper uh, properties of such flows, you have to go to, 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 to special representation. And how to do it? We restrict our attention to a minimal component. For any such minimal component, we choose a curve which is transversal to, to the flow because of the fact that the flow is minimal. Uh, this uh, transversal, it's a global transversal, which means that uh, every, every trajectory is the transversal infinitely many times backward or forward, of course, except of uh, separatrices. And then we can cons <coughs> consider so-called roof function. And this roof function is just the first return time of the point of a point uh, from this transversal to this transversal. And uh, these two guys gives us so-called special representation. So I, 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 I forgot to say, but the first return map is just interval exchange transformation if we choose a correct so-called standard parametrization of this transversal. So the picture is more or less like that. So as you see here, we have some singularities of the roof function. And this singularities uh, appear because of the existence of fixed points, of course. And uh, we have logarithmic singularities uh, derived from non-degenerate saddles. And we obtain polynomial singularities uh, derived from degenerate perfect solve. So the situation is like that. Okay, let me say something more precise about, about uh, what does it mean? Logarithmic singularities, polynomial singularities. Okay, but first let me let me recall that every interval exchange transformation is coded by a pair. Uh, permutation and a vector, and this vector lambda 
collects all lengths of exchanged intervals and uh, which are exchanged according to the permutation pi. Then we write T with subscript pi lambda and this uh, coding uh, give us uh, parameterization of the space of interval exchange transformation and then we have a natural Lebesgue measure on this space, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. What does it mean that function over IET has logarithmic singularities? It means that this function has logarithmic singularities at the ends of of, of exchange intervals. More precisely, we have such situation. So here you see purely logarithmic parts. And this part is very nice because it's absolutely continuous. So we have very different separate parts. And uh, this space of, 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 of such functions we will denote by log. And this space, it's a good Banach space with the norm defined in this way. Moreover, for any parameter between zero and one, we can deal with the space of function with polynomial singularities of a degree at most one. And formally, this is, this is the space of, 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 of uh, functions which satisfies these two conditions more or less they behave like c plus minus times x to power minus a. And this is exactly expressed in these two formulas. OK, and this space is also equipped by a good Banach norm. And a folklore result says that if we deal with any locally Hamiltonian flow, we take a transversal that the roof function uh -huh, and uh, in the, the non-degenerate uh, uh, framework, we have always logarithmic roof function. And if there is at least one non-degenerate singularity, then uh, the roof function belongs to the space PA where A is explicitly uh, expressed here. And uh, uh, when there are no centers, the, 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 the flow is minimal, then we have a nice property called symmetricity of, of the rough function. OK, and equipped with this uh, knowledge, we can formulate very general, easy, uh, approach which says that to prove a dynamical property for almost every locally Hamiltonian flow in a, in a stratum, it's enough to prove this property for any special flow uh, built over almost every interval exchange transformation and under the roof function in an appropriate class which I described in the previous uh, slide. And this passage, this approach, um, uh, reduce many dynamical problems to a subtle roof function analysis. And it was used perfectly uh, for the problem of mixing, which was, which it was uh, solved in, um, in a series of papers by Kochergin, Hanin Sinai, and Ulchigrai. OK, so let me finish the first part of the introduction. So I, I, I didn't say anything about deviation, deviation phenomenon. Now it's the, 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 the second part, which is really related to the topic of, of, of my talk. And uh, the story here starts in late 90s when Zorich observed the phenomenon of deviation spectral and its relation to so-called Lapunov exponent of so-called uh, conservative Zorich co-cycle in the context of uh, deviation uh, for piecewise constant 
uh, observables, constant, <laughs> piecewise constant function, constant on uh, exchange intervals for almost every IET. So he observed that for any such function, if so if we look at ergodic sums, the maximal uh, deviation uh, has it looks like n to power nu, where nu is an exponent. Uh, and this exponent is related to, to the Lacan of exponents of Zorich, Kontsevich, Kosaka. I, I will try to explain what it is, but in, in a few minutes, but very roughly. And this result and some uh, experimental uh, uh, calculations after that, uh, Kontsevich and Zorich formulated <coughs> the following conjecture, which says more or less the same, Var, but in continuous framework for flows. Uh, okay, uh, th this is a little bit more precise, but says more or less the following, that we have G exponent, where G is the genius of, 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 of the surface. Uh, and for almost every uh, locally Hamiltonian flow, for every smooth observable, uh, for every smooth observable, there is, there is an exponent new, which belongs to this finite set, such that the maximal growth of the ergodic integral is polynomial with exponent given by this number. Formally, formally is, 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 is the following formula is quite familiar. Uh, okay, and uh, what they claimed, they claimed also that all these exponents are different. And this was proved by, by Avila and Fordi. Uh, sorry, Avila and Fianna in 2007. Okay. And this problem was essentially positively verified by Fordi. But with, but essentially, but partially. And I will explain you why I say that it was partially uh, solved. Okay, first of all, uh, he considered almost every, of course, locally Hamiltonian flow, but only in the set of minimal guys. So there are no centers. <laughs> and moreover, he considered only functions vanishing at fixed points. In fact, uh, he claimed something more. First of all, he claimed that, uh, okay, he, cons he didn't consider smooth functions, but Sobolev functions, which uh, Sobolev in the weighted sense, whatever it is. Okay, but nevertheless, nevertheless, it's, it was a huge, huge uh, progress. And for D constructed G so-called invariant distributions. Invariant distributions are just functionals. And uh, he observed, he proved that if first, some first of them are equal to zero and the next one is non-zero, then the growth, it's really polynomial and the exponent is exactly the i plus first exponent in the series. Okay, so let me say something easy. So I can explain you what is the first invariant distribution. This is just given by the, by the mean value. Of course, when mean value is non-zero, then the growth is just like n, so we should take the first exponent, which is equal to one. But the other exponents and other uh, invariant distributions are much more, much more uh, complicated. And to do it, he used the passage to translation surfaces and Teichmiller, of course, Teichmiller uh, approach. Uh, it is possible, it is possible because he assumed that the flow is minimal then after some smooth change 
of speed, but smooth change on the surface without fixed points, we can go to translation flow. Uh, translation flow, it's simple. So roughly speaking, is a flow for which the vector field is constant. So is Hamiltonian flow, you, you, you change speed and you obtain a translation flow? Yes. A translation, point. translation, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. But only, only, only in minimal, in minimal situation. I mean, that's because you're in two, one, two degrees of freedom. So locally, everything's integrable. And the whole stuff is a singularity. Yes, 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 yes. And if we, if we, if we denote by W the, the function which gives you the change of speed, so because of the fact that translation flow has constant speed everywhere, but our flow slows down quickly around fixed points, this function might be singular at fixed point. Okay, I will not say so much about beautiful, powerful approach made by- By the way, what, what is known about the rationality of the Lyapunov exponent? Do you know when it's rational or when not? No. It's just so there. There is some knowledge about sums. Some of them. Some of some of of some subsets, but I I I don't think so. That it's, it's not okay. So using this using a uh, Miller flow on the moduli space of trans surfaces. If you don't know what is this, I'm not able to explain quickly. But it's it's a fancy it's a fancy powerful uh, approach. Uh, Forney proved um, uh, this this result first first for uh, translation surfaces. So if you have such a result for translation surfaces, you can uh, get back uh, by 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 the inverse of the change of speed. And then you have the same result for, for uh, locally Hamiltonian flows, but you pay a price. By the way, in the, back, uh, the distribution need not be a measure. Do you know where, where has, what's, you know any more about it? I can't remember. I mean, this was his thesis, right? More or less. So they are not, they are not measures. That's yeah, sure. In general, they're not, but. You know. so, okay, so you, so you will see in a moment how to define them. So I, 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 I will try. I will try. I it on smooth function. Is that the point? Yeah. Okay. Okay, but okay. The price is that we have we have our result, but for observables with, which are of this form, which when f is uh, Sobolev and w is a function with singularities, so it means that this function has must be vanishing at fixed points. Okay. And the next, the next, uh, the next point uh, was made by Buffetov and he improved this result. This is, this is the improvement. So he invented so-called now Buffetov cosycles. Uh, and this is a beautiful, this is a beautiful so-called spectral decomposition which says you that each uh, ergodic integral you can compose uh, using disco cycles. Disco cycles, <laughs> why they are nice? Because we know they are the growth of their growth. It's, it's exactly uh, polynomial with, with, with the exponent given by a lack of exponent. And what about the disweights? They are given by uh, for the distributions. And we have an error term which has some polynomial growth. Okay, what, what are the problems uh, with this uh, approach and results given by Forney and Buffetov? And why I said that on this level, the problem was not closed completely. First of all, they are, they are, they are approach worked only for minimal flows, there are no centers. So each center, the existence of center 
it's an open condition. So a center is stable under small perturbation. So it, it means that they kicked out a big topologically big set of flows. The other point is that they are used only observables, which are zero at fixed points, and how to fight with these two problems. The first of all, we can use an alternative approach made by uh, Marmiusa Yokos. So this approach uh, uses um, special representation. Okay, so we, we go to the special representation. So we take the first return map, which is IET. We have, we have uh, the root function with some singularity. And now we can assign to any smooth observable the function phi f, which is on the, on the interval. And the definition is easy. So this is just the integral along, oh, maybe it's time to use the choke. So we, we take the point x, we look at the orbit until the first return and we integrate our function f. And this is the definition of the function phi. And this guy, it's enough to understand the growth more or less. Uh, the growth of uh, integrals. So it's enough to study the growth of ergodic sums of these guys. Why? If we look at such sum, it's in fact uh, an integral, but along long, long, longer and longer intervals, in fact, until the second, uh, third, and ends return to the to the, to the transverse. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't give direct way from one, one problem to the other, but believe me that it's, it's doable. Okay, so first, first uh, question is, what are the properties of the function phi? And in the easiest situation, when the function is zero in a neighborhood of n, fixed point, then uh, the function phi f is absolutely continuous with uh, uh, derivative of bounded variation on each exchange interval. And this is the situation which was treated by Marmi Musa Yokos. Okay, but we don't like the situation because it doesn't solve the second problem. <coughs> So when we deal with arbitrary uh, observable, but in uh, the non-degenerate regime, that the function phi f in this is in the space log. That's good because we, we know the space. And if we consider the degenerate uh, regime, then generally the functions uh, phi f belong to some PA where A vary depending on some properties, but nevertheless, nevertheless, the maximal A is of this form. Okay, so we have, we have, we have uh, an operator and this operator is a good operator from the space of smooth function with additional properties to these three spaces. And in each subspace of functions observables, this operator is bounded. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So let me let me come back to this heuristic observation. Okay. So we have a passage from f to the function phi f. We know what are the properties of phi f, but how to deal with the growth of this Bikov, so-called Bikov or ergodic sums. To do it, we have to we can use so-called renormalization procedure. And here, uh, Zolich Konsevich Cycle, a version of Zolich Konsevich Cycle, will come. I'm sorry for this next two slides, but I was not able to do it in, in, in more, in better way. Okay. 
So let me explain very roughly. So let's start from uh, IET, which is minimal and ergodic, and suppose that we have a sequence of nested intervals. For any case interval, we, uh, we, we consider uh, the corresponding induced map. Suppose that every such corresponding induced map, it's an IET, this is IET in fact, but uh, which uh, exchanges the same number of intervals. Uh, then the case map, we can code by permutation and vector. And suppose that the sequence of this pairs is obtained by uh, as, uh, the, as, as, as iterations of some map R. This map R acts on a subset of interval exchange transformations. Uh, are like renormalization, and suppose that the case, the case per, it's given by the 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 the, the R R's iteration of the renormalization, and next we assume also that the projectivization of this guy is ergodic. Okay, for people which are familiar with the subject, uh, it would be easier to say that this sequence. It's a sequence of interval of intervals, interval exchange transformations, which are obtained by acceleration of so-called Rossi Vich uh, induction. Okay, but probably most of you don't, don't know what is this. Okay, so okay, let's consider the induced map. This induced map can have this, this form where tau k is the first return time to this interval. And this function tau is piecewise constant, constant over all exchange intervals. So denote by this tau alpha, the, the, the common time of, of return. And let's us consider so-called renormalization operator, which acts on generally on N1, N1 functions. And the, the definition, it's easy on any point from the alphas interval, we take the ergodic sum under the first return to the interval, case interval. Okay, and this is very important guy. This sequence of operators preserve three classes of functions which I introduced, and there is another fourth class, uh, which is the base class of functions which are constant, piecewise constant, constant on uh, exchange intervals. And the, the last class, it's also invariant. Of course, this guy, this class of functions, it <coughs> can be identified with the space R to power D. So we can consider this operator as a matrix, which is in SLDZ. And if we collect all these matrices, they could be treated as a cycle over the renormalized uh, uh, projectivized renormalization uh, function. We assume that this guy is ergodic, so we can uh, use standard Oseleda's theorem. And using this theorem, simplicity of this cycle and uh, the result which I mentioned a few minutes ago by Avila and Forney saying that, that we have simplicity of the spectrum here, all Lapun of exponents uh, are formed in this way. So we have a uh, symmetric situation and exactly G positive Laplace of exponent. Okay, and now we can reformulate a little bit uh, this, the, 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 so, okay, so we can use the same Oseleda theorem, but for invertible extension of the renormalization, then we have a splitting of the space 
of the piecewise constant functions, the, the splitting is uh, on, so there is an unstable, stable, and central part. So these guys, this guy, have G one dimensional components related to the fact that we have G positive Lapunov exponent and by Avila and uh, Viana, they are simple. Okay, and now let's choose some functions, non zero functions, Hi belonging to Gi. They give us a base of, of unstable space. So each Hi corresponds to I's Lapunov exponent. And now we can use the observation of Fournier, which I mentioned a few minutes ago, which says that for almost every IET, we have more. In fact, we know the maximal growth of variation for, the, for all ergodic sums for such guys. And the, this growth is polynomial, and the, the, the exponent of the growth is given by the ratio of the i's lapon of exponent by the maximal one. Okay, and now every such base element can be represented in this form. Remember that to any, this is this picture, for any function observable, we assigned uh, some, some function. And we can, in a sense, in this situation, we can come back. We can find a smooth function, which is vanishing around all the fixed points, which gives Hi. Okay, and now having this property and using the general approach, which I mentioned also, uh, which gives you a passage between flows and IETs, we have, we have the following fact that the growth of uh, ergodic integrals of this guy, it's exactly of the same nature as Hi. So centers are present. Sorry? Centers can be present, right? Yes, 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 yes. Here we forgot about translation surfaces. We deal only with interval exchange transformation and that's it. Okay, and why, why is they are important? Because these integrals are very good candidates to play, to, to play the role of buffet of cocycles. Uh, so it's, it's a cocycle, integral is a cocycle. So <laughs> in fact, we have the same, the same splitting as in the, buff, uh, in, in the buffet of style, but now still in our framework, we don't know what is the definition of this operator, of course. If we know this guy, then error, it's for free. Okay, how to do it? And this is the main point made by Magnin Sayokos and then extended uh, in our papers. But we start from Magnin Sayokos, uh, which constructed, they constructed so-called correction operator acting on the space of absolutely continuous function and with value in unstable space. Um, okay, what is the definition? This is a limit, and this is the limit. And the definition is the following. We take our function, we apply renormalization, then we apply so-called mean value operator, so which counts mean value in each exchange interval. So after application, we have a piecewise constant function. So we can apply then the backward uh, renormalization because on the level of, 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 of zorich konsevichko cycle, we use just SL, SLDZ matrices. And finally, we project over everything on the 
unstable <coughs> space. Of course, it is not a piece of cake to show that uh, this sequence uh, is converging. And there is another thing which is not a piece of cake, which, which says you that if you start from a function, absolutely continuous function with uh, bonded variation and derivative, if you correct our original function, but this piecewise constant function belonging to a stable guy, we reduce a sense exponential growth. So after, after this correction, the growth of, of renormalization operator is sub exponential. Okay, and now, and now what? Ah, okay. I should mention that if we apply this procedure to a member of unstable space, then it, it, it gives you the same. So it's, it looks like an identity for the subspace, which will be important in few, in, in one minute, probably. Okay. Okay, we have, we have defined this guy. This is a member of unstable space. And we have a base of unstable space. These are the members of the base. So we can decompose this guy along this base. This way, we obtain exactly G functionals, distributions. And finally, the a version of Fournier distributions is given by the composition of the operator phi and this operator. Both of them are bounded, so the composition is also bounded. Okay. How how to okay, so we have of all ingredients of this of this uh, decomposition. We have defined this guy. We know that the growth of this guy, it's polynomial, which precisely defined exponent. What about the error? We should care about the error. And it's not so bad. So first of all, we do the following decomposition. When we start from a smooth function, we decompose <coughs> in this way. So we have a reminder. We will care about it. Okay, so if we integrate this formula, this decomposition, so we obtain exactly the spectral form, the desired spectral form. Okay, which it does not say anything about the error, but wait a minute. So we can apply to this decomposition the operator phi. So we have such decomposition of phi. F, this guy, it's exactly this guy. And now we can use, we can apply to this decomposition, the correction operator finally. And because of the definition of the correction operator and the fact that it acts on the unstable space as identity, we simply, we simply obtain that the correction operator of the reminder is zero. So we don't need to correct them to obtain sub, uh, sub polynomial rows. Okay, and this is exactly what is written on the next slide. So using more or less Zorich, this gives sub polynomial rows for the reminder here. And because of the because of the heuristic I presented some time ago, we can pass quickly to 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 the to the study of the growth of of uh, ergodic integrals for the function f error. But this guy is exactly the error. So this is a general framework which is very useful. And uh, this gives a complete uh, proof of deviation formula, but for functions 
uh, which are vanishing around fixed points, but we avoided the problem of existence of samples. Okay, how to how to pass how to pass how to fight with the problem of vanishing around fixed points? This is done. Oh, fortunately, I'm I'm close to the end because uh, there are there are recent results. So it was okay. So first, we consider non generate non generate sorry, <laughs> you know what is this, <laughs> uh, fixed points, so it's only simple saddles, uh, and suppose that our observable can be non-zero at some simple saddle. Then the function phi f, as we observed, it's not longer absolutely continuous, it has logarithmic singularities, but fortunately, uh, we proved with Corrida that the correction operator, which was defined as the limit of this, this, this well, maybe not very complicated form, but, but it is, it can be extended to the log space. And moreover, uh, this uh, uh, correction operator is useful, which means that when we correct our function phi by this piecewise constant function, then the, the reminder has sub exponential growth, but not longer in the sup norm, but in one, in the one norm. Of course, we are not able to use sup norm because our function is, is, is unbounded. So this is a correct language. And we have also a little bit more precise uh, description of this growth when we are in a symmetric type case, which appears uh, when, when we have the absence of, 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 of centers, then the sequence is bounded around, along a subsequence. Maybe it's, no, probably it's not bounded generally, but it doesn't matter. Okay, and using the general strategy described some minutes ago, we used the previous result, in fact, the first part to confirm uh, Zorich Konsevich uh, conjecture completely. So now we consider almost every locally Hamiltonian flows with non-degenerate fixed points. So, we can have centers, so we receive, uh, so we, we, we remove centers and we um, uh, focus on the minimal components. And then we proved the existence of, of invariant distributions. In fact, the definition you, you, you had. Uh, uh, and we obtain an old school form of deviation formula, spectral formula. Okay, so maybe a little bit more interesting is the next slide, which says something about the error term. So we can, we, we can prove something uh, about this error term, but only in minimal context. So there are no centers. Then there is a nice dichotomy which says the following, that if our function is zero at fixed points, then the error term is uniformly bounded with respect to the space and to the time. So it's nice. But on the other hand, if the function f is non zero at at least one uh, simple subtle, then the error term is equidistributed on the real eye. What does it mean, equidistribution? Equidistribution uh, is, means the following. If we take the error term and we observe, we observe the frequencies of the error term in some finite uh, intervals, and we take a pair of such intervals, and uh, we say that a function is equidistributed if the ratio of these frequencies approaches 
to the ratio of legs. So it's quite natural. Okay. Is it somehow related to Hopf's ergodic? Yes, system? it's exactly it's exactly in the ergodic Hopf uh, theorem style. And on the other hand, we use ergo, uh, Hopf ergodic theorem. So in fact, we consider the flow some skew product extension by the function f, and we prove ergodicity of the infinite infinite measure extension of, of, of the flow, and then we use and then we use uh, of ergodic theorem. Okay, and the final part is about the degenerate case. We had a hope to extend the correction operator to the space PA, but it's not the case. It falls. We cannot do it. Unfortunately, but in a sense, fortunately, you will see in, a, in, in, in the next slide. So instead of extending, we modified. So in fact, we took, we, we modified the correction operator such that it takes a value in a subspace of the unstable space. So in, in a sense, we don't care about low Lapun of exponents. Low means lower than A times lambda one. And finally, in, in fact, we constructed a one parameter family of such, um, of such uh, correction <coughs> operators. And now it's a funny thing because what, uh, something what worried us gives us, in fact, a new phenomenon. And this new phenomenon are new exponents and new cosines. So finally, we proved a new form of the spectral decomposition. <laughs> so as you see here, we have an old school part, which uh, came from, uh, from, from Buffetov and then uh, uh, from our result uh, with Corina, but we have a new guys, which, which appears because of the existence of uh, degenerate perfect saddles. And we have some <coughs> leukocycles. In fact, these cycles are also, are also integrals of some smooth functions, and we have new invariant distributions, but this new invariant distribution uh, 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 in, contra, in contrast with uh, Fournier distributions are explicitly defined. They are partial derivatives of uh, our function f uh, at fixed points. And uh, the growth of mucocycles, of course, uh, are polynomial, and the exponents here are explicitly understood. <laughs> they depend on the multiplicity and the order of differentiation. And that's it. Thanks a lot. I I took only one hour. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? You looked at the same questions for the uh, SL2 action in the Teichmuller dynamics on differentials, which comes in all these counting problems at Mirzakani and Eskin. Then the exponents, uh, I think, much less understood. Have you looked at that at all? They, I mean, I guess the, the interval exchange is. Yeah, I know what is going on, but it seems they don't know how those exponents depend on the data in practice. So here you, you apparently have at most G. You say it's hard to compute the, the old-fashioned uh, old or whatever. The DIFs are very hard to compute. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, but. <clears throat> In other words, if somebody's using this, they want to know what these distributions are. They, those are their 
kind of bad eigenvalues in a way that I think of them. The ones which aren't got the fastest equidistribution rate. So you, you would, in this case, you say that most G of them, do you know when they occur or not? You, I mean, do you know what those exponents are? I guess that's what I asked you before. You can't compute them in, 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 in even in a concrete interval exchange. Only when we have so-called self-similar situation. <laughs> but it's easy because you just you just compute eigen values of some matrices. That's it. That's it. And then they are not rational. Ah, so again, <laughs> coming back to your, uh, but they're probably algebraic. Yeah, yeah, it's true, sure, okay. sure, because because they are roots of, oh, oh, of, of polynomial. Uh, oh, the, the things are integers. Uh, Lyapunov exponents, like in Furstenberg's theorem, products of random matrices are very hard to compute in any example. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.